Praise God. Oh, I'm, I'm just excited. Blessed be your name, Jesus. There's a scripture here before I, 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 I go into today's word, which I will use part of it as my exhortation today. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse number 1 and 2, through to 3 or 1 and 2. If you can give me that message, you have the message Bible? Right? The message, this is simple for you. Because sometimes a lot of people think that Christians are not supposed to pass through tough times. But you got it wrong. Hallelujah. You got it wrong. They are part of the plans of God for your life. When there are difficult times, when you go through temptations and trial, they are part of His plan. Come and say to yourself, they are part of God's plan for me. They are part of His plan. But how you handle them matters. Because some, by such art, by what they go through, they abandon God. That is not time to abandon God. That is the time to draw closer. When God allows it, God wants to pull you of life. When you go through difficulties and suffering of life, how do you handle God? How do you relate with God? That is where your victory is. That is where your victory is. In those trial, in those trouble time, in those difficult time, that is where your victory is. How many of you, you want gold? You spend a lot more to buy gold, gold, in, gold chain, gold ring, gold, whatever. You spend much more, is it not? You work hard for it. You work hard for it. Nobody gets gold from just on top. For you to get gold, what do you do? You dig down. Dig down in your relationship with God. Amen. Dig down. Dig deep. What God wants is a deep relationship. So that is not time to abandon God. When you go through tough time, let me read this scripture of all. This is one of the scriptures God gave to us when get to my wife when we are starting the ministry. But I'm not reading from where I'm taught that later on. But let me read just one and two. This is what the Bible says. It says, since God, how many of you know that God is generous? God is generous. He said, I'm reading from the message. He says, since God has so, has so generously let us in on what he is doing. Why? Because you weren't well qualified for it. <coughs> it is the grace. It is the grace of God, the unmerited favor of God that brought you to him. So the place where you are now, you are not qualified for it. Where you are now, it is the grace of God that brought you there. Is that so? Since God has so generously left us in on what He's doing, we are not about to throw off our hands and walk off the job just because. We run into occasional hard times. I'm going to be speaking on disciplined what? Love. So part two of the message I started last week. Disciplined love. So when you go through trials, when you go through temptation, when you go through hard times, there are only 
temporal. They are only that what? Come on, talk back to me. They are only that what? Temporal. They are not meant to last long in your life. Then you will say, but why did you, God, why did you allow them to come? It's part of his plan for your promotion. You follow me? It's part of his plan for your promotion, for your elevation. It's part of his plan. So it's a, a way for God to discipline you. Will you be able to handle the blessings that I give to you? You know that there are so many people who cannot stand 100,000 because they have never seen it in their life. They only hear. But if you bring 100,000, how many of you have seen when, they, when people see a lot of money, so they just collapse? Can you handle it? So God prepares you. He said, I'm about to open the door of Satan, a door of breakthrough, the door that no man can show. He said, I'm about to open the door. Will you be able to handle the blessings? So he takes it through. How many of you remember Joseph? Joseph in the Bible, he went through the training process. He went through a training process. Then he went through pain. He went through suffering. But did Joseph give up on God? No. He never did. But yet more, he drew closer. He drew closer to the Lord. He drew closer. Hallelujah. He drew closer. But at the end, what became of Joseph, the prime minister, the first prime minister, the position was created for him alone. There is a position created for you. Amen. The first prime minister, he wasn't a citizen. Joseph was not a citizen of Egypt. He was not an Egyptian. Joseph was an Israelite. But a position was created for him. He went through the pain. He went through the suffering for him to enter there. He never gave up on God. It's part of the process. I read that scripture again. It says, since God has so generously let us in into what he is doing, we are not about to throw up for a lot of people do. They throw it back at God. Say, God, I'm tired, I'm fed up. They throw it back. Say, I don't want it anymore. He said, we are not about to throw up our hands and want us the job just because we run into occasional hard times. God went for that to say, he said we refuse to wear masks and play games. There are a lot of people who are playing church. There are a lot who are playing God. They think they are playing God, but they are playing themselves. Because the blessing, the breakthrough that God has for them, they are just running away from it. It takes discipline for you to handle the blessings of God. And all part of God process for your life because God loves you. Hallelujah. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Don't ever manipulate or maneuver behind the scene. Be real with God. Come on, tell somebody, be real with God. Just be real with God. Be real with Him. Don't play God, don't play church. You are in an era where your worship, your relationship with God needed to be solidified. It needed to be strong. Because the devil is going to throw tantrums. He's going to throw troubles. He's going to throw them around. 
If your relationship with God is not strong, you won't be able to stand. And I wish you stand because a lot will complain. James 1 and verse 13. This is what the scripture says because a lot will complain. God, why did you let me come? Why did you let me go through temptation? Why did you let me go through trials? Why did you let me go through pain? Why did you let me go through difficulties? James 1 and 8. He said, don't let anyone under pressure do give in to evil saying. Don't give in to what? Evil saying. Because you are under pressure. Because you are under, you are under pain. Don't give in. Don't give in to evil saying. God is trying to trip me up. Say, so God is trying to trip me up. God is not a tripper. God is, in King James Version, he said, God is trying to tempt me. God does not tempt. But God will allow sometimes temptation to come your way. Trials to come your way. Why? Because he wants to discipline you. Because he loves you. How will you handle it? So the scripture says, God is impeded to evil. God hates evil and puts evil in no one's way. God will not put evil your way. He will not put evil your way. In other words, in God will not deliberately just let you fall into evil, but He wants you to be strong. So if God allows it, God wants you to say, He's saying, You are working with me. Your relationship with me is wobbling. Your relationship with me is not strong. Your relationship with me is, is, is not something I could beat myself for. Like he did for Job. When he told him, Satan, Satan said, the reason why Job is worshipping you is because you bless him so much. Just let me take everything that he has. Hallelujah. Do you know why God allowed that to happen to Job? Let, let me give you a little bit. You know why? Because at the point, Job was not faithful to God. Yet, Job was worshipping God. But Job was not truly faithful to him all the way. Are you following me? God blessed Job so much. God blessed Job so much. Job was so wealthy, so rich. But his riches were not protected. Why? Because Job was not faithful with his time. He wasn't paying time. Ne Job never paid time to God. So God will bless you, irrespective, that your blessings will not be protected. Are you following me? I'm putting you on the right path. Right path. As blessed as Job was, he was never paying tithes to the Lord. Yet he was so blessed. But what happened one day? One day, one day, Bible student, how many sons did Job lose? Seven. Seven of his children were dead one day. How many of you can handle that? Seven. Yet, Job was in a relationship with God, but yet he wasn't faithful with God. He never paid time. He never blessed God with his time. And God said, I will let this trial come your way. Why do you think that God did that? To draw Job out closer to him. Why do you want to wait until one passes through pain before? We learn a lesson. Hallelujah. Don't throw away. Don't you throw away because those things are part of the process for God to bring you closer to Him. In other words, sometimes you pass through difficult situation, it's a discipline process. Why? Because God loves you. Hallelujah. God loves you. As Christians, ladies and gentlemen, God allows us to pass through.
through difficult situations, not because he hates us, but because it is part of their preparation and training process because he loves us. If you are not prepared and trained for difficult situations, how can you overcome such? You cannot overcome them. You can't handle it, but you've got to be trained. When sin stares you on the face, when sin, when you are before sin, face to face, how do you handle it? If God does not train you, if God does not allow you to be humbled, if God does not allow you to be obedient, train you to be obedient, to be, to be you know, God, God will not train you to, to always trust him. How do you handle such things? So sometimes, God allows the things that come to us, not because he hates us, but because he loves us so much. And by something, he disciplines us. By the way, let me remind you, we are on the thing. God's discipline proves his love for you. And today's topic, just as like last week, is discipline. Love. Thank you, Jesus. When sin stares you on the face, how can you resist it? How can you resist it? When you go before your friends to a place and they are in the dark corner drinking, how do you handle it? Because they will so push you. And the word system calls it what? Head pressure. They will so push you. Say, just try it. Just only one day after all. God is merciful. How do you handle it? Are you able to resist it? When we are going through financial difficulties, and here there is money that you can easily lay your hands on. And God allows you to come by them. How do you resist it? It takes training, it takes discipline for you to resist the devil. Hallelujah. So God trains and disciplines you so that you can always resist such situation. God trains you so that you can always look up. Don't look down. A man that wants to rise does not look down. He looks up. You know why? Because trouble brings you down. But elevator takes you where? Up there. And Jesus has been elevated for you. He's been lifted up on the cross. Jesus has been right up. He's been lifted up. He's been lifted up. And the Bible said, He is the lifter of my head. When men think I am down. God lifts me up. Amen. He is the lifter of our heads. That's God. Lifts you up. He lifts you up. Ladies and gentlemen, when God disciplines you, it's not because he hates you. He loves you. That is why, let's read Hebrew. The book of Hebrew chapter 12. This is what the Bible says. Hebrew chapter number 12. We will read from verse 1 to 4. A lot of people have passed through difficult situations. You are not the first. And you will never be the last. Because Jesus didn't promise you a smooth ride as a Christian. All three. No, 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 no. But what Jesus promised you, even as you pass through that difficult situation, you are an overcomer already. That's what Jesus promised you. 
So it will come. Because if it doesn't come, you won't know what Jesus does or what Jesus is doing on your behalf. You won't know. You won't be able to listen. That is why a lot of people, they are not able to worship God because they see the Bible as a novel. They see the word of God as one of those things. Uh, of, of those. No, it's much more than that. The Bible says the word is powerful. It's quick. It's sharp. It pierces through the miles into the book. And God is the one that walks through his word to bring to pass that which God has for you. That's God. That's God. So, because the people had been through them. Hallelujah. It is the part of the discipline process. In other words, God is training you. Learn to always look up to me. The author and the finisher of your faith. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he overlooked the pain, the suffering of the cross. Jesus had power to walk off. He had power to command legions of angels to smite him, the those who came to arrest him. He had power, but he gave himself up. He did. He did. He did. And the only reason why he did it was for you and myself. So people have been through it. People are still going to pass through. How do you handle it? How do you handle such situation? Let's read Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. This is what the Bible says. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers. Now, let me give you a preamble. When you read Hebrews chapter 11, it talked about the patriarchs. Men that have gone through trouble time. Men that have gone through pain, difficult situation, but yet did not give up on God. Why? Because it was a way of discipline. They never gave up on God. So that was what Paul, see the very of here in verse 12. So when he talked about the pioneers, the patriarchs, he was referring to those ones. He says, all these pioneers who, who blessed the way, all these veterans shutting us on, it means we have better get on with it. Get on with it. Straight down. Start running and never quit. Start doing what? Running and never quit. No extra spiritual fact. No parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on who? On Jesus. Who God began and finished this race. We are in. We are in. Who God started and finished the race. Jesus did not pass did not pass through difficult times. He did. Did he quit? No. It's part of the process. Never gave up. Jesus never gave up. He said he started it. And Jesus finished it. The Bible went on to say, study how he did it. What did he go do? Study how he did it. The scripture says, study for to yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. I think it's the first one to king. Study for to yourself approved. So study, how did Jesus win? How? How was he able to go through what he went through, yet he didn't give up? He had the willpower to give up. Even at the time, Jesus said, Lord, let this come pass over me. But Jesus realized that he didn't come on the world, came to the world for himself. He came for a purpose. He came to redeem those who needed redemption. He said, Lord, let your will be done. How many of you say that? God, in all I am going through, let your will be done. In all the pain, in all the difficulties, let your will 
You know, let's read on, ladies and gentlemen. Glory be to God. Oh, what a glorious God. The Bible says, I read it again. It says, Who both began and finished this race we are in? Study how he did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed. He never. There was, there was a victory that had already settled. Victory that has already been won. Jesus said, I needed to obtain it. No athletic, no athletic man, the man who runs on the field, goes, okay, let me run to win then. I will now make the gold cup for myself. The gold cup is already settled. It's there. Blessed. The gold cup is ready. Already displayed in the corner, waiting for them to be obtained. The victory is already won. The success is already here. The sickness is already been taken care of. And your failure has been taken care of. The victory is in your hand. God wants you to lay hands on it. That's what He wants. To lay hands. On the victory that I have for you. Oh, what God, Lord is so sweet. God, Lord is so sweet. He went on. What did he say? Let's read on the disciple to me. Oh, glory be to God. That as Larity finish in and with God, it means he finished. He didn't just finish, but let me just finish, you know. For the losers, when they are running the race, they will always pick the first, the second, and the top. Because the rule has been set. Even if there are eight lanes, it means five of them will not get anything. But when the first and the second and the third are filling the race, you see them still coming behind. Still running. Just to do what? To finish it up. But that is not as a larity finish. It's not a super finish because they will get nothing from it and you run into me. Are you running to win? He said, Jesus started. He started well. There are so many Christians who started well. Along the way, they failed. There are so many Christians who started well. For them, they are not in church. They are home. There are a lot of Christians who start that work. They are not. They will not preach well because they haven't placed that set their eyes on the Lord. They set their eyes on the man. And when you set your eyes on the man, you will not finish. Set it on the Lord so that you can finish off. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You think we are all running a race? I am running a race. I want to finish well. And just as I am running my race, wanting to finish well, I want you to finish well. If the job is even more difficult for me. Because I am running, I'm putting eye on you. I know running well. I want you to run well. I want you to win. I'm not only concerned about myself. There is that concern for you when you finish well. Come on, run the race and finish well. Run the race and finish well with me. Run the race. Jesus, finish well. As a rating, finish. In and with God. He could not put up with anything along the way. Cross, share, whatever it was, Jesus never put up with it. Are you following the people of God? Let, let, let me just stop there. I want to get to continue to read that part of the scripture. The Bible says, he said, those pioneers, the great a cloud of 
witness the pioneers that the Bible referred to here was what I told you that Paul was referring to in chapter 11. Their faithfulness, their dedication is a constant encouragement for us. Listen, people of God, we do not struggle alone. And we are not the first to struggle with problems. We are not the first. And we will never be the last. Others have run the race and won. Others have done what? Run the race and they won. And their witness stirs us to run for us to also win. This is what it is. The Christian life, ladies and gentlemen, is involved with hard work. Hard work. So it's important. The Christian life is involved with hard. Philippians two twelve. Philippians two twelve. This is what the Bible says. I just read part of it, not all. Philippians two twelve. He said. What I am getting at, friends, is that you should simply keep on doing what you have done from the beginning. Right from the very day you gave your life to Christ. That fire that was burning in your bone, don't quench it. That is that drew you to Christ. Continue to put fire on it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Continue to put fire on it. Continue. Continue. Don't let it go down. That's what Paul is reminding us. Keep doing it. You've done from the beginning that thing. When I was living among you, you lived in responsive obedience. You responded to the world. You were exemplary. Now that I am separated from you, keep it up. Whether pastor is there or not, don't want, don't wait for pastor. Are you following me? Don't wait for pastor to always push you to do what is right. The word of God is there to guide you. Do what is right. Don't wait for pastor to remind you. Your obligations, your duties to God. No. Don't wait. Don't wait. Keep doing what is right. When you get to home, read that part of scriptures, I'm not going to continue. It requires us not to give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Whatever endangers your relationship with God. Don't. Whatever that endangers your relationship with God. This is what I written here. To run patiently and to struggle against sin with the power of the Holy Spirit to live effectively, we must keep our eyes on who? On God. Don't let anything endanger your relationship with God. Don't let it. If our core focus is on the Lord, the work becomes so, so, so hard Easy. I'll give you an example. Time will not permit me to finish this. Maybe I will just give you this example and I will stop. Listen. I'm sure you have read the story of Peter in the Bible. You remember? Peter in Matthew chapter. Matthew, let me get the chapter for you. In Matthew chapter 14. I'm just 29. Jesus had just finished a crusade. And he told his men, those who were with him, he said, I am I'm pulling from the other side. He wants to go and have a quiet time with the Lord. Then he allowed his disciples to pull over to this other side. So Jesus was alone. When Jesus has finished, his relationship, his conversation with the Lord, through prayers and communication, Jesus said, let me go and meet 
my father. Let me go and meet my team, his disciples. But Jesus didn't want to disturb them because they would probably be sleeping. It was night. So Jesus said, He said to himself, I'm going to walk on this water to them. So Jesus stepped on the water. So he was walking to meet his disciples on the other side of the sea. And then one of them heard the sound of some noise. And they began to say, there is a demon coming to us. Some evil are coming to us. Something is happening. Somebody is coming to catch us. But Peter said, he said, that's Jesus. Jesus, Peter was always the inquisitive one. Though he was always fearful, but he was very inquisitive. He said, that's Jesus. So he said, Master, is that you? Jesus, is that you? Jesus said, yes, I am. He said, if that is you, be me come. So Jesus, what did he do? He begged Peter. He said, Peter, come. As long as Peter's eyes were on the Lord, as long as, long as his focus was on Jesus, what happened? Peter was walking on water. If I ask you to go walk on water now, you will just, even one of your legs, you are already sinking. You haven't even put the two in. One, you are already sinking. But Jesus beat Peter and said, Do what? Come! Peter, with all boldness, stepped out of the boat. But the boat was a place of certainty. Mm. That was where he knows that nothing will happen to me. But anything after that. But do you know, God changed the course. The place of certainty is the place where Jesus wants it. And that is where he wants you to be. That's the place of certainty. And Jesus beat him, come, and Peter stepped out of the boat into the water. And Peter was walking on water. Majestically. Then Peter looked back and he said, I'm walking on water. I'm walking on water. I must have been doing it by my own power. He took his eyes on Jesus. The moment he did, what happened? Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him. Endure the pain of the cross and he walked on and he continued to move further. I say your future is certain. Amen. When your focus is on the Lord, we will stumble if we look away from Him. If we will stumble if Jesus has you to do anything, follow the laws of the Lord, follow the commandment of Jesus. Follow the commandment of God. That is what he's asking to do. It means there is something in that which he's telling you to do. Don't fail the Lord. Don't fail the Lord. When you take your eyes off him, listen to me. Peter was only able to walk on water once his focus was on Jesus. But the very moment he shifted his focus, he began to see. Rise up on your feet today. Focus your attention on the Lord. God will discipline you. He allows this thing to come to you. Whatever pain, whatever difficulty, whatever situation you are in, God loves you. Oh, glory to God. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. We should, we should be running for Christ. Not for ourselves. And we must always keep him in our sight. Ladies and gentlemen, in your race.
Keep Jesus in sight. Know that the Savior is there waiting for you. Keep him in his, keep him in your sight. Don't say, oh God, because you are asking to pass through this difficult situation. It's a discipline process. Keep Jesus in your sight so that you can win and become successful in this race. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to Him. When we are first with hardship and discouragement, it is not easy. It is easy to lose sight of the big picture. But we are not alone. You follow me? You are not alone. There is help. I said there is help. I said there is help. Help is coming your way. I said help is coming your way. 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 In the name of Jesus. Many have already made it through life. And glory in far more difficult circumstances, more difficult situations when they were disciplined. Many have made it through. Many have. How would you feel if I tell you that suffering is synonymous to Christianity? How would you feel? You will say, oh, so the reason why I became a Christian is for me to suffer. But listen to me. Suffering is synonymous to Christianity. In a good way. God is never pure. Or God is never pure until it goes through fire. Fire is a purification process. Suffering, pain, difficulty, trials that you go through are the process for you to be disciplined because God loves you. They are in process. So that when you come out on the other side, you will become pure. Suffering is a training ground for Christian maturity, when you get home, read 2 Corinthians 4. I, I, I need to read it. Let me read it. Let me read it. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through to 18. It develops you. It develops our patience. Let's read it. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through to 18. Hallelujah. Just listen as I read it. Glory be to God. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through to 18. Are you there? So I'm giving it to you. Right. We are there. So we are not giving up. Say to yourself, I am not giving up. Whether or not, whether you discipline me now or tomorrow or next tomorrow, I won't give up on you. So we are not giving up. How could we? Even though on the other side, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On this, on the inside, we are God is making you laugh. Not a day goes by without His unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes. Some people call it potato. We said that when you chose to call it potato or potato. He said they are small. He said the pain, the difficulties, the trial that you are going through, they are small what? Potato. They are small potatoes. Small. How will you compare a small potato to a big giant blessing that is coming your way? He said they are small potatoes. Compared to the coming good time, the largest celebration prepared for us what was our declaration for this month? Who remember? Praise the yes? Praise. No, no. Give me the written. No, it's, it's our month of.
of celebration and resolve. A month of celebration. So God already saw ahead. What will we go through? So God said, all you need to do, the matter has been resolved. Celebrate me. Thank God for the great worship this morning. It was a celebration time. Hallelujah. It was a celebration time. Let's go. He said, these are times are small potatoes compared to the coming good time. The loving celebration prepared for us. There is far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. Focus your attention on the Lord. Say, God, help me. Help me. Even in your discipline, as you discipline me, it's because you love me. Help me. Thank you, Father. Bless and be your name. Take the glory and be now exalted forever. In Jesus' name, we are worshiped. Amen. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Listen, people, don't disobey God's instructions. Remember the story I told you about Job. Job is so blessed. He's so blessed. Had good business, good job, wonderful family. But his blessings were not protected. What guarantees and protects your blessings is obeying the command of God. Pay your time and let God protect you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Honey, please, you come and take your friend. Hallelujah. Thank you.